Well, this should be a bit quicker than the protection video. If you've not seen my video on protection paladins and how they've... Oh, welcome back. I should probably start with welcome back, shouldn't I? How rude of me. But I'm so excited to get into this one because rep paladins, uh, through TB, even TBC, bit of a meme spec. And they are, I think you'd probably agree. They can do some damage, don't get me wrong. But in Wrath, you're going to absolutely love it. So if you haven't seen the protection video, I'll put a link up top now. You know, feel free to go and check that out once you finish watching this one. I'd, I'd probably wait because you're not going to want to miss this. And if you aren't subscribed to the channel, please consider subscribing. Really trying to push the channel to 30k before Christmas Day. Can you help me make that happen? Because that would be amazing. And obviously drop a like on the video if you like it. So what are we going to cover? We're going to look at talents and what's changed. We're going to look at new abilities that you get, which as a rep paladin fairly minimal fairly minimal when it comes to really useful abilities if i'm honest it's nowhere near as in-depth and, and the changes are nowhere near as massive as they are for prop paladins but still worth talking about we'll have a little look at glyphs what glyphs you get and how they work so if you don't know what the glyph system is check my inscription video i'll put a link to that in the description as well but we will cover what glyphs are very very quickly let's start with the new abilities so ability wise as a rep paladin there really isn't that much that's gained there's a few things that change which before we get onto the talent we'll talk about how seals and judgments work and we won't worry too much about things that you get from talents and in all fairness as a retribution paladin you get pretty much everything from talents so divine plea can be useful for all three specs so what it does is you gain 25 percent of your total mana over 15 seconds and the amount healed by your flash of light holy light and holy shock spells is reduced by 50 percent now this is obviously useful as a rep paladin you're using mana so being able to get 25 percent of it back over 15 seconds once a minute is useful as is taking a a little bit less damage or putting this on somebody else with sacred shield so sacred shield not quite as useful as a prop paladin because it doesn't last double the time and obviously not quite as useful as a holy paladin as well each time the target takes damage they gain a sacred shield absorbing 500 damage and increasing the paladin's chance to critically hit with flash of light by 50 percent for up to six seconds they cannot gain the effect more than once every six seconds, last 30 seconds. Now, the reason this is good, because it will interact quite well with a talent that we'll have a look at shortly, which is basically you being able to use instant cast flash of lights. But yeah, ultimately, your, dam your, your role there is to deal damage, don't get me wrong, but still helping the healers out a little bit, getting the 50% extra crit chance from your flash of lights that you're doing, which are instant. I'll say that again. But we'll get into that once we've covered the abilities, which I think we're done. But yeah, quite honestly, outside of that, there's no real great changes which you're not going to get in talents. You do get a single target taunt, but as a rep paladin, unless you're going for some clutch moment where you quickly switch to your one hand and shield and you, you know, you taunt something, which now, yes, all paladins get hand of reckoning, which is a single target taunt. And it also does holy damage if the target you taunt isn't already attacking you. And then a minor change to, well, it's not a minor change, quite a big change. Divine protection, where it used to be a useless sort of pre-divine shield bubble you now actually have a 50 percent damage reduction but it still does give forbearance so you know you need to use it cautiously because you're obviously going to want to be pumping damage with your avenging wrath but having a damage a 50 percent damage reduction cooldown is very very useful most of the juicy abilities come from talents though which we'll look at but first you need to understand how seals and judgments work because they have changed and they've changed for the better so seals now last 30 minutes and they don't get consumed when you use judgment. So Seal of Command has gone for a rework where all melee attacks deal 150 to 202 additional holy damage. When used with attacks or abilities that strike a single target, the additional holy damage will strike up to two additional targets. And unleashing it does a bunch of holy damage as well. So like I said, it lasts 30 minutes and now your main two seals that you're going to be using are Seal of Command and Seal of Vengeance or Seal of Corruption if you're Horde. Seal of Blood is no more. So Seal of Vengeance does the, the stacking, you know, the five stacking holy damage dot and the more stacks you've got, the more holy damage you deal. So when you unleash this seal's energy, it will do 443 holy damage to an enemy, increased by 10% for each application of holy vengeance. Your other seals are still there, so seal of light, seal of wisdom, even seal of justice, which you're rarely going to use, but it can still be quite useful in certain circumstances. Is that useful? I've not even got it on my bar. Oh yeah, I have, it's there. If we hit the target, you'll see with the additional holy damage is striking the target dummy that's next to it. The melee damage is only hitting the main one, of course. So when we look at the judgments, judgment, judgment of wisdom which basically has a chance of restoring two percent max mana to people who hit the target we've got judgment of light which does the same but it, instead it's two percent health and then we've got judgment of justice which stops the target from fleeing and limits their movement speed to ordinary movement speed but as you can see just auto attacking with seal of command on will strike the nearby target and when i judge 
it will also the judgment effect will hit the nearby target as well so if we were to stack up a big seal of vengeance get it to five stacks when we judge that five stack seal of vengeance you'll see it's pure single target it's only hitting the one target we're only going to get that holy damage cleave when we're actually using seal of command seal of righteousness is still there it does slightly less holy damage when you're attacking the target but it actually unleashes the seal for a lot more holy damage so if it's a really short fight where you can't get anything stacked up and you're more bothered about burst when you judge you're going to get a lot more bang for your buck on a single target fight using seal of righteousness than seal of command but that fight would have to be incredibly short or incredibly disruptive and when i say disruptive think of the nexus there's a boss in the nexus that summons a rift like a chaotic rift thing and he becomes immune but because that happens so frequently getting the big judgments from seal of righteousness instead of using seal of command or vengeance could be the way to go so they're the new abilities anyway so they're basically the new abilities or how certain abilities have changed like your divine protection for example or your seals and judgments you should probably know how blessed the difference between blessings and hands as well now because that's going to be useful before we get onto the talents so as you know if you have a useful blessing on you at the moment in tbc like blessing of might if you was to then blessing of protection yourself it would remove the blessing of might and then that would need rebuffing that's not how it works anymore because certain blessings have been changed to hands instead of blessing of protection it's now hand of protection does the same thing but it doesn't remove the blessing but then we've got two major ones that you'll be using quite frequently which is hand of sacrifice more useful for a tank but places a hand on the party or raid member transferring 30 percent damage to the caster it will persist for 12 seconds or until the caster's transferred a hundred percent of their maximum health now that used to be a blessing blessing of sacrifice which you could keep up a hundred percent of the time and you could use it to cheese certain mechanics but it's, it's now a hand on a two minute cooldown same as blessing of salvation is now gone you've instead got hand of salvation on a two minute cooldown which places a hand on the part of your raid member reducing their total threat by two percent every one second so, so over the 10 seconds it will reduce their threat by 20 percent also on fights where you need a huge personal cooldown Glyph of Salvation can be extremely useful here because when you cast Hand of Salvation on yourself, it also reduces damage taken by 20%. So not only can you now use it to drop your own threat, you can also use it as an extra personal cooldown. Maybe there's two, two points in a fight that are quite close together where you need a bit of damage reduction. You could use Divine Protection on one to get your 50% damage reduction and then a Glyph hand of salvation on another to get that 20 percent then if we go through the talents there's not massive massive changes to the talents from tbc to wrath of the lich king there's just a lot of shuffling around so we're not going to focus on the things that shuffle around or change quite minorly if you was to take improved blessing of might for example which ordinarily in tbc is in the first tier it increases the attack power by 20 percent in wrath of the lich king it increases the attack power by 25 percent and only requires two points not really a substantial change where we need to talk about it too much so we're going to focus more on the new stuff or the stuff that's been reworked completely so as you'll notice most of this tree is the same with things just moving around so let's focus more on things that have changed completely such as vindication which now gives the paladins damage and attacks a chance to reduce the target's attack power by 23 for 10 seconds you can obviously put two points in that for 46 attack power and that will scale up as you level whereas it used to be a chance to reduce the target's attribute you'll notice improved ret aura has gone where it's in the tbc tree but what we've actually got now is sanctity of battle which increases your chance to critically hit with all spells and attacks by three percent and increases the damage caused by exorcism and crusader strike now the exorcism portion of this damage is extremely important because exorcism is actually an integral part of your rotation you're going to be using exorcism a lot because exorcism is one that's been reworked and i left it until now to talk about because it can now be used on all targets but if the target is undead or a demon it will always critically hit whereas as you know in vanilla and tbc for it to even hit it required them to be undead or demon so now you'll be using it on all targets and you can increase its damage not just from talents but there's a glyph that also increases its damage which we'll talk about in the glyph section sanctified retribution is basically sanctity aura but it's gone for a change because it no longer provides holy damage but you do get the improved sanctity aura portion of it so now it increases the damage caused by ret aura by 50 percent and all damage caused by friendly targets affected by any of your auras is increased by three percent it's really useful to note that any any aura will increase the damage by 3% because there's a lot of fights which will require resistance, a resistance aura on. Let's use Saffron for an example in Naxxramas. 
you would use frost aura, frost resistance aura, and you know, if you were forced to use ret aura to get that three percent damage, it would be quite punishing to have to switch to frost res aura. Whereas you can use any aura you want and still get that three percent damage for your party and raid, which is huge. Divine purpose has changed, but it's still no more useful than it was in TBC. Really, it reduces your chance to be hit by spells and ranged attacks by two percent, and gives your hand a freedom spell a fifty percent chance to remove any stun effects on the target. As you can appreciate, that's a PvP talent. Vengeance has been reworked slightly, so it gives nine percent once it's stacked three times, 9% bonus to physical and holy damage. It was five points, but to get 15%, but you don't actually need 15% because you're going to get so much damage from other sources now anyway. Repentance has had a lot of different types of mobs that it can be used on added, so it can be used against demons, dragon king, giants, humanoids, and undead now, whereas repentance in TBC would only work on humanoids. Art of War is the big one, so it increases the damage of your judgment, crusader strike, and divine storm abilities by 10%, and when your melee attacks critically hit your next flash of light or X exorcism spell becomes instant cast this is where i was talking about the usefulness of being able to flash of light yourself because your exorcism is still going to have a cooldown odds are you're going to have more art of war procs than what you can actually consume on damage abilities so on the basis it's only exorcism you're going to be able to use with it you're going to have art of war sat there procced all the time and not be able to do anything with it a lot of the smoothness of our rep paladin plays changes later on in the in the expansion so certainly in icc once you start getting tier 10 gear there's there's a there's a big shift in the dynamic of how you play a rep paladin but for now it can be quite frustrating sat on art of war procs and not being able to use them because your exorcism's on cooldown but at least you can throw a flash of heal flash of light on yourself or or on somebody else another good one is judgment of the wise so your damaging judgment spells have a hundred percent chance to grant the replenishment effect for up to 10 part your raid members mana regeneration equal to one percent of their maximum mana per five for 15 seconds and to immediately grant you 25 percent of your base mana so getting mana back in any way shape or form as a rep paladin is obviously extremely useful you will have next to no mana issues as a rep paladin in wrath of the lich king compared to tbc and even vanilla but also bringing that replenishment to the raid there's several classes that bring replenishment obviously another one would be shadow priests but on the basis it only affects 10 targets having more than one person that can actually keep replenishment up is obviously a very good thing so fanaticism actually remains pretty much exactly the same apart from you getting an extra three percent crit now we've also now got sanctified wrath which increases the critical strike chance of hammer of wrath by 50 percent also reduces the cooldown of avengers wrath by 60 seconds which will then bring it down to a two minute cooldown down. And while you're affected by Avenging Wrath, 50% of all damage caused bypasses damage reduction effects. Again, more of a PvP element to it there, but still really nice. The damage has been reduced, but so has the cooldown. So it's only a four second cooldown there instead of six. Swift Retribution, which your auras also increase casting, ranged, and melee attack speeds by 3%. We also have Sheaf of Light, which increases your spell power by an amount equal to 30% of your attack power, and your critical healing spells heal the target for 60% of the healed amount over 12 seconds. Strange thing was there was a lot of emphasis put on retribution paladins more or less saying look you should be using your flash of light spell you're getting all this extra spell power you're getting a hot aspect to your to, to your heals and you can do you know increased critical strike chance if the person you're throwing the heal on has got sacred shield on so actually as a retribution paladin once you start getting some gear you can almost ret your way through heroics as the healer like that is absolutely possible then the last two big ones which righteous vengeance so when your judgment crusader strike and divine storm spells that are a critical strike your target will take 30 percent additional damage over eight seconds and then divine storm which is amazing and i know you want to see it so it's an instant weapon attack that causes 110% of weapon damage to up to four enemies within eight yards. The Divine Storm heals up to three party or raid members, totaling 25% of the damage caused. So it's still got that nice healing mechanic to it, but you have real strong cleave. And that's the beautiful thing about a Rep Paladin, the cleave, being able to consecrate Divine Storm, seal a command, hitting so many targets. The cleave damage is where a Rep Paladin absolutely shines. As a Rep Paladin, the only other thing that you're going to take, which is extremely useful, is actually in the Holy Tree, which is Aura Mastery. So it causes your concentration aura to make all affected targets immune to silence and interrupt effects and improves the effect of all other auras by 100%. So best way to demonstrate this would be with Frost Resistance Aura. So if we use Frost Resistance Aura and we can see we've got 130 Frost Res, if we then Aura Mastery, we've now got 260, which being able to double that Frost Resistance for certain fights on quite a short cooldown as well, it's only a two minute cooldown, or using it on any of your Auras really, but it's the Resistance ones where I think it really shines. If you've got a big amount of fire damage just about to come in and you can double your Fire Res or you know Frost, whatever, Shadow, 
the 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 resistance auras are the ones where it really shines for me for raiding. And then really finally glyphs. If you don't know about glyphs, check my inscription video out. Probably the best way because that will describe exactly what inscriptions gonna add to classic Wrath of the Lich King. But glyphs are some you get three minor slots and three major slots and they have an effect on your abilities in some way shape or form so there'll be certain glyphs that are amazing certain glyphs that are useless certain glyphs that are only useful in certain fights and you want to carry spare ones in your bag so looking at retribution specifically what sort of glyphs you'd actually use the main damaging ones are glyph of exorcism glyph of exorcism increases the damage done by your exorcism by 20 percent, which is massive because glyph of exorcism is something you're going to be using a lot because if we go back to thinking about how this character actually is going to play we know we've got that chance with art of war to get free instant cast exorcisms so if we attack the target till we get a proc we've now got a proc art of war then we can go down we can use our exorcism bang instant cast still on cooldown and this is what i mean we're now by the time we crit again which will probably be very soon we'll crit before exorcism is even off cooldown so we've got art of war proc again now what do we do we can do a quick heal of, you know, a quick flash of light on ourselves, for example. We've got Art of War again, can do another quick flash of light. Art of War again, exorcism. You know, it procs so frequently that you can do so much healing and damage. You know, you can do, uh, you, you do both. So get in the extra 20% glyph for exorcism, absolutely worthwhile. Then we've got Seal of Vengeance, which ultimately you're going to be using on single target, which is Seal of Vengeance uh, or Corruption if you're Horde, also grants 10 expertise while active. Obviously, you're going to absolutely want this. And then we've got Glyph of Judgment, where your Judgment deal 10% more damage. Outside of these major glyphs, like I said about Glyph of Hand of Salvation, would be useful if you want to use it for the extra 20% damage reduction on certain fights. For pure DPS, it's not something you're going to use, but depending on what you're doing, there's a lot more flexibility in Wrath of the Lich King than there is in TBC. And it's these things that will make you stand out. You know, taking 20% less damage where potentially you may die is going to be extremely useful, but it's going to come at a cost. And that cost is going to be damage. There's not many minor glyphs that are overly useful, but the same for protection. If you watch the protection video, damage against undead increased by 1% while your sense undead ability is active. So whenever you're fighting undead mobs, you basically just get a flat 1% from your glyph, which is nice. Glyph of Lay on Hands, which reduces the cooldown of Lay on Hands spell by 5 minutes, where it's a 20 minute cooldown at the moment. It'll bring it down to 15, which... That five minutes could be the difference between someone living or dying. And then really, the third glyph, you can put whatever you want in. Glyph of Kings, Glyph of Wisdom, but I would probably say most Rep Paladins will run Glyph of Blessing of Might, which increases the duration of your Blessing of Might spell by 20 minutes when cast on yourself. Outside of that, there's not really that much that's of major use. And then as for their overall damage, just to finish the video off, on anything where there's a few adds, their damage is exceptional. When they can stand there and cleave away with Seal of Command, Consecrate, instant exorcisms going on, divine storming all over the place. It's absolutely exceptional. Single target, they still do very good damage. They're not going to be leading the pack. They're not going to be bottom. They're going to be somewhere around the middle. Anywhere where there's extra adds that are introduced, big or small. If you're cleaving down three, four elites at a time, rep paladins are really, really going to shine. Still going to get our damage by boomies, but you know. <laughs> and that's about where I'm going to leave it. I went into a bit of detail in the feral resto balance video about rotation, and I completely decided against it. I don't think this is the format to even touch on what the rotation is too much. We've looked at how the mechanics work, but bringing it all together, I think that fits much better in an actual rep PVE guide, which I'm going to do super short, sort of seven to eight minute guides for every class, where it's just a crash course. We're not going to get into the intricacies or the intimacies of each class, but you will be able to log on, watch a seven to eight minute video, be able to set your bars up and start pumping. So until you see those, that's going to be once all the class change videos are done and all the profession videos. But if you watched all the way to the end, thank you so much. I really appreciate your support. And if you are still here, then you must have enjoyed the video. So hit that like button, subscribe to the channel for future content, and I'll see you on the next one.